So today we're going to start our collage of Monsters Don't Eat Broccoli. And this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. We're going to draw a monster, just the outline of the monster. And then we're going to use gadgets to stamp or mono print in the background. Then we'll use black and white construction paper to create the face of our monster. And then eventually we'll draw a cityscape in the back, paint it, and then put our monster on front of the cityscape. So the first day we're going to make our monster. So you're going to choose a colored piece of paper. And then I have this monster handout that you can use or you don't have to use it at all. You can use it to give you some ideas, but a lot of the monsters have mouths. And remember, we're not doing a face, so we're not doing eyes, nose, or mouth, but we're doing everything else. So this page has a lot of good variety of monsters, and maybe you like the neck of this monster, but the feet of that monster, the body of that monster, and you can mix and match, or you can draw your own. It's okay. But when you draw your monster, it needs to fill this paper. So whether you start at the top or the bottom, start if you start at the top of your monster, start at the tippy top of the paper. If you start at the bottom of your monster, start at the bottom of the paper. So I'm going to um, start with the top of my monster, near the top, and the reason it's just near the top is because I'm going to give it some hair. And then, let's see. I like the idea of pants on my monster, so I'm going to give him some pants. And then some legs. And see how I'm making the legs go all the way to the bottom of my paper. And I really want your monster to fill your paper up. And your monster doesn't have to have legs. You can see some of these monsters don't have any legs. It doesn't have to have arms if you don't want it to have arms. Um, but remember, you're leaving the face off. So let's see, I'm going to do some shaggy hair. And I made sure the hair went near the top. So this monster really, really fills the paper. I'm going to give him some short arms. Okay, so here's my monster filling the paper with no face. The next step is to get a black oil pastel and go over your pencil lines. Now with oil pastel, if you don't press real hard, it kind of looks like crayon. So I want you to press hard with the oil pastel and make a nice heavy black line right over the top of your pencil lines. Now oil pastel smears, so you need to be careful not to run your finger or your hand across the oil pastel and smear it. But you also need to push hard. Make a heavy black line. Now if you draw a tiny little monster, which is not what I want you to do, but if you draw a tiny monster, it's hard to trace those tiny little details with this thick, chubby, black oil pastel. So take your time and draw a big monster, filling the paper so that you can easily trace the details with the oil pastel. Oops, I missed the pencil line there. But I'm not going to go back and um, try and erase because it could smear, so I'm going to just make that line a little bit thicker fix it that way. So now that you've outlined, your hands are going to be a little messy, but I don't want you to wash them just yet because we're going to print. We're going to stamp, gadget stamp. So here's one that's finished, where you see the black outline, but then I chose two colors and two gadgets. So I chose purple and this um, cream color, this apricot color, for um, my two colors. And you'll have a couple of different colors to choose from. But you're going to pick two colors and two gadgets. So when you get your printing tray, it's going to look like this. It's going to have some different gadgets, which are just everyday found objects. These are um, spools of thread without the thread on it. This is a water bottle top, and this is um, a little container that uh, tights used to come in. So when you stamp, you're going to pick one gadget and one color, and then you're going to pick a different gadget and a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and use this water bottle top, and you're going to take and just kind of tap it in the paint, get some paint on there, and then you're going to stamp it, press down, and pull straight up. And it's okay if it goes off the edge of your monster. We're going to cut your monster out later, so you can just kind of stamp randomly but I don't want you to stamp too much. You could stamp so much that you cover up all the color of the paper and you have more paint than you do paper, and I don't want that. So take your time, stamp neatly. I want to be able to see the shapes. 
and I want you to fill your monster up. I had a student that um, wanted to just stamp two eyes and a nose. So I want you to stamp and fill it ran up randomly. And then you're gonna pick a second color and a different gadget. So you know I picked this with the green, so I need to pick something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this spool of thread, get some paint on it, and press that in different spots. And you can overlap and get a little green on here by accident if you need, if you wanna overlap and make those touch. But you can also stay between them if you want and not make them touch. And before you say you're done, look at the monster. I don't have any of this second color over here yet, so you don't wanna say you're done before you've kind of printed evenly. So then when you are finished, you're gonna take and put this on the drying rack and let it dry so that when it's finished, it'll look like this. Good job, first grade. So today's part of Monster Stone Eat Broccoli is we're going to start our background paper, which is a uh, drawing of a cityscape. And so to start, you're gonna start with a big white piece of paper, turn it vertical, straight up and down, and you're gonna write your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. Flip it over, and then you're gonna use a ruler to draw your buildings. Since I'm right-handed, I like to start on the right-hand side. Your buildings can get pretty tall on your paper. You don't want them to all be super tall because you wanna leave a little room for sky. So I'm gonna start with a building here. Notice that every time I draw a straight line, I'm using a ruler. Then I'm gonna have this building overlap my next building. And they can all be rectangles, but if you'd like to maybe make one that's a little bit shorter, that's behind some other buildings, you could do that. Or you could make your building gradually get a little bit smaller or skinnier as it gets taller. So I'm gonna do that with this one just to show you what it could look like. And so I've got enough room up here for, um, for the sky, so that's pretty good. So now I'm ready to do my windows. Now, I don't want you to draw small windows. I want your windows to be almost gigantic. I want them to be big so that you don't have to draw very many windows. So for instance, I'm gonna do a rectangle window on this building. And look how big my rectangle is. It's really big. And I want the other rectangle next to it to be the same size. And then every rectangle after that is gonna be about the same size. So they're gonna be in nice neat rows and columns. Since this building is behind this building, you only see part of the window there. And I want you to try and draw them big so that you don't have to take as much time drawing. If you draw tiny little windows, this is part is gonna take you a really long time to draw. So if you draw big windows, it won't take you as long. You can do circle windows. Try to keep them all about the same size. Um, square windows. Or you could do one that's kind of like a skyscraper where you do vertical lines. And then you do horizontal lines. So basically crisscross lines. So skyscrapers are made of all glass windows. And so if you just draw the crisscross lines. So my windows are nice and big. They fill up the space and it didn't take me very long to draw. Now you're gonna use one oil pastel at a time on each building. So one building is gonna be all one color. The second building will be all one color of a different color and you won't use the same color twice. So if you draw your buildings big enough today, you should only have to draw about three or four buildings, maybe five at the most. So this building I outlined with the yellow green color, so I'm done with that, so I'm gonna move on to a different color. All one color for the building. Last thing that you need to do with the oil pastel is if you want to put some clouds in the sky you want to take a white oil pastel and you want to draw some clouds with the white oil pastel and then press hard and color it in and you might not be able to see it on the screen what I'm doing but when you do your white oil pastel you can see it on your paper pretty clearly and fill it in nice and solid After you have it outlined with oil pastel, then you're going to paint it in. 
So you're going to get a black placemat to go under your work. You're going to get some liquid watercolor and a water basin. The water basin is for you to clean your paintbrush off between colors. Liquid watercolor, some people accidentally have messy paintbrushes and they mess up the yellow or sometimes they drip another color into the yellow. So if you know you wanna use yellow today, you might wanna use yellow first thing before you use the blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my yellow while it's nice and fresh before anybody messes it up. And just paint the entire building, windows and all, this one color. So I'm not painting my windows a different color than the building. It's just all one flat color. Like a watercolor, you just dip your paintbrush in the paint. It's like water, colored water, and then you just paint it on top. Now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off and use blue to do my sky. And you're going to paint right over the top of the clouds and they will start to show up for you. And then you're going to paint the sky between the buildings if you have any space. And try not to drip as you pull your paintbrush across the top. Be careful not to have so much paint on your paintbrush that you're dripping everywhere. All right, so I'm done with the blue. I rinse my paintbrush off and I pick a new color. Even though my building is outlined in orange, I don't have to use orange as the paint color for my, paint, for my building. And I'm going to be real careful not to drip the green on the yellow building. Rinse my paintbrush off. I don't want to do blue for a building because I did blue for the sky. So I'm doing purple. Um, it was outlined with purple and now I'm painting it purple. But you don't need to do that at all. You can use whatever color you want. Do my best not to drip this purple onto any of my other buildings or onto my sky. So there's no need to rush, you have plenty of time to paint, so make sure that you paint neatly without dripping. And All right, and then you are finished with your cityscape. You're going to put this paper on the drying rack, your cityscape on the drying rack, and put your black placemat back over on the counter by the sink. Good job. So today we're gonna finish up our Monsters Don't Eat Broccoli collage. So, um, on the first day, we drew our monster, we outlined it with oil pastel, and then we used a mono printing technique with gadgets and stamped two different color patterns on our monster. And it might look something like this. So it's all on one paper. And then on the second day, we drew our city for the background, outlined it with oil pastel, and then we painted it with liquid tempera. So we have two papers today. We have the monster paper and the cityscape paper. And eventually, we're shooting for something to look like this at the end. So we're gonna start with our monster today. And the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your monster out of the paper. And you really need to focus on the black oil pastel. It's gonna be a little tricky because you have all this cool pattern that you stamped and you might kind of lose track of the black, but you wanna pay close attention to the black edge. And when you cut today, I want you to cut right around the outer edge of the black and leave just a little bit of the colored construction paper between the black oil pastel and the edge of your paper. So you're not cutting right on the black oil pastel. You're just following right alongside of it and leaving just a little bit of an edge around it. That way you don't smear the black oil pastel or get it all over your hands, hopefully, because um, you're gonna be using white paper for the eyes later and you don't wanna have messy oil pastel hands. So we're gonna try and trim very carefully leaving a little bit of the paper edge. So this might be a little tricky for you. Take your time, it's not a race. And cut out as neatly as you possibly can. After you get your monster cut out, then you're gonna make your monster's face. You're gonna make some eyes and a mouth for your monster. And you need to look at size and where you're gonna put your monster. This monster, is a great easy monster to make eyes nose and mouth for because it has this really big space so really any kind of eyes or mouth i make are probably going to fit on this monster no problem 
But if I have a monster that looks like this, the head is much smaller, so my eyes need to be much smaller, my mouth needs to be much smaller. So there is a big difference between two monsters. So you need to look at your monster and think, how big can I make my eyes? How big can I make my mouth? And you have to fit both those on your monster. Here's another example of a monster, a third example, where it might be a little bit medium-sized eyes and mouth. So you have your large, your small, and your medium, depending on what kind of monster and how much room you have on your face. So to make your eyes and your mouth, you're going to get a white piece of paper. And you're also gonna get a black piece of paper. You can start with your eyes first, and what you wanna do is fold the white paper in half. So you need two eyes, so why not fold your paper and make one cut? Now you can draw it first in pencil if you want, or you could just cut out the shape. So if I just wanna cut out some simple circles, then I need to size them up. This is gonna be my eyes. So I have two cut out exactly the same. On this monster, that size of eye is no problem. I have plenty of space for my mouth. Let's check the medium monster. What size would this work? Uh, these would work, but my mouth is going to have to be really small, so I'd have to pay close attention to that. And then obviously on this last monster here, these eyes simply are way too big. So if you cut your eyes and they're too big, just take them, stack them back together, and just cut them smaller. It's a quick, easy fix. You don't need a whole new piece of paper. You don't need to redraw anything. You just want to trim them down, make them a little smaller, and then see where you are. Those are still probably a little too big, so I'm going to trim them a little bit smaller. Now if you have black oil pastel over your hands, you're going to get black oil pastel on your white paper and your white eyes, so you want to kind of be careful. So these are a pretty good size. So before I glue them on, I'm going to do the black dots in the eyes. So I'm going to take my black paper, cut a small little piece off, fold it in half, because I need two, and cut these out. And this is the most basic eye that you can make. I mean, just circles inside circles, and that really isn't a problem. So then I'm going to take my glue and put a little dot of glue on my white, put my black dots inside, and then put a little bit of glue on the face of my monster and glue those eyes on. All right, and now I need a mouth. So I go to the black. I don't, if I'm gonna do this small monster, I don't need a large piece of black. So I'm gonna cut a smaller piece of black off, maybe this big, and then I'm gonna cut a mouth out. Um, my mouth can be any shape I want it to be. I'm going to make it kind of a wobbly shape, a freeform or organic shape, kind of like he's moaning or, or roaring. And that's still a little too big. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit more, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, that fits. Now I want to add some teeth. So I go back to my white that I cut my eyes out of, and I only need a few teeth, so I'm going to cut a small part of my paper off and maybe I'll just cut some simple triangle teeth. These are the most simple that you can make and they have to be tiny because the mouth is tiny. So this might get a little messy with the glue but that's okay. I can always wash my hands later. So I'm going to add some teeth at the top, some teeth at the bottom. And then glue the mouth on. When the glue dries, it'll dry clear so you won't see all this glue mess around the sides of my teeth. But they're so tiny, it's hard not to have a glue mess. And then I would take my cityscape and put glue on the back of my monster and glue my monster onto the cityscape. And I can sit them here at the bottom of the cityscape or I can kind of raise them up a little bit. It really is up to you how you want to glue them on. But I want to show you some different options for mouth and eyes. So I did, for this little monster here, I did the basic eyes. So here's another set of basic eyes, just big white circles. 
and I'll set them on top of this monster so you can see them. Just plain white circles and black circles, okay? Another set of eyes you could do is you could do black, you could do white ovals, and to make it a little kooky, your black dots don't have to match. You could have a big black dot and a little black dot. You could glue one up high, one down low, kind of look like mad scientist eyes, um, kooky, crazy monster. You could do a monster where the eyes are looking up. Maybe he's looking up into the sky. So you put the glued, the black dots near the top of the shape of the eye. You could do mad monster where you do this diagonal, this sharp diagonal straight line for the white part and then you add the black dots. So those are some options for your eyes, whatever you want. Um, just the basic circles is fine. And then I have options for um, your mouth as well. But I do like these kooky eyes, so I'm gonna add, glue these onto my monster here. All right, and then you have different options for your mouth. So remember on this monster, we just kind of did a, a free form organic shape for the mouth and then added some sharp teeth. You could do just a simple circle for the mouth and add some sharp teeth. And the triangle teeth are the most basic teeth. They're pretty easy to add. And then um, you could add your mouth on here and look how big I made this mouth. That would really fill this monster and look nice. Um, you don't have to do those sharp uh, triangle teeth. You could do teeth that kind of look human where they're kind of rounded and they look like our teeth. And so you could do maybe a smiley monster or you could just do square teeth. So here's another mouth with just square teeth on it, and you could do that. Um, whatever you come up with is going to work and um, be fine with me. Just make sure what's most important is that your mouth and your eyes fit on your monster. They shouldn't be hanging off. They shouldn't be way too big for your monster, and they also shouldn't be way too small for your monster. I shouldn't take these tiny little eyes and glue them on this big monster. I could glue one tiny little eye and then do one really big eye, and that would look like crazy scientists too. So that might be fun as well. So then I also have this medium one, medium uh, monster, and I'm gonna do these mad eyes, glue those on. My mouths here are just way too enormous to put on this monster. That one would fit, but it would kind of it would cover up that nice detail. This is just way too big. So I don't want you to include a mouth that's way too big for your monster like that. So I need to come up with something different for the mouth on this, and I'll do that later. So today, you're going to cut your monster out, leave that edge along, the colored edge along the edge of the black oil pastel, cut out some eyes and a mouth and um, some teeth, and glue those onto your monster. And then the very last step is to take your monster and glue it onto your city. And then this goes on the drying rack when you're finished.